This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In previous sections, we discussed the value of inputting commands with a keyboard. One key to efficiency in AutoCAD is taking advantage of the keyboard shortcuts, the function keys, and command aliases. The function keys act as toggles. They turn certain drawing aids on and off. The two you're going to find that you will use the most are the F3 and the F8 keys. The F3 key will toggle your running O snaps on and off. You can tell if they're on or if they're off by what it says in the command line. Press F3, my O snaps are on. It says right here in the command line. Press it again, the O snaps are off. Same with the F8 key. It will turn your ortho mode on or off. With it off, and I draw a line, see it can be drawn at any angle. If I turn ortho mode on by pressing F8, it says ortho on now. My lines, no matter where I put my crosshairs, are either horizontal or vertical. Very useful when you want to draw straight lines. The F1 key will open up your help window. It makes it very easy to get to. The F2 button will open up a palette that controls your command line. It shows everything that you've been doing. You can see where we've turned the O snap on and off and where we drew the lines. Pressing F2 will close it back. F4 will turn your tablet mode on or off. AutoCAD used to be controlled not with a mouse, but with a tablet and a puck. You would move the puck around the tablet, and the tablet had a face on it that looked very similar to your interface screen that we use today. I haven't used the F4 button in years. F5 will toggle your isoplane mode through the different isoplanes. You have a top, a left, and a right. We'll talk about drawing an isometric drawing later on, but use the F5 key to help you with this. F6 toggles the dynamic input off and on. See, now it is turned off. Now, as you can see my line command coming up in my dynamic input. It is turned on. E for erase. Select my objects. It's gone. F7 will turn your grid off and on. The grid is a form of graph paper that will put markers on your drawing area for you to help you aid in your drawing. By pressing the F9 button, your crosshairs will snap to each point on that grid, whether you turn your grid on or off. The F7 button will only make the grid visible or invisible. The F10 will turn on your polar tracking, which again we will talk about later. In F11, will turn your O snap tracking on and off. The polar and the O snap tracking, which again we'll talk about later, allows you more precise drawing and will eliminate certain steps for you when you have to create new lines. The function keys, as you see, will turn on and off certain different tools that will help you draw more accurately, more quickly. Make sure to get a better understanding of each of those tools that you watch that chapter that pertains to it. In other videos, again, we've talked about entering commands into the command line. We mentioned the fact that there are command aliases. These are typically one or two keystroke long entries that will start a command. Most of them are either the first letter of the command, as in L for line, C for circle, or E for erase. There is a file that manages these. It's known as the PGP file. You can edit these if you'd like, add new commands to it, take away commands, or change some of the aliases. I recommend that for the most part you leave it alone, but it's a very simple edit. To find these so that you can know what they are, you need to go to the Manage tab on the ribbon and click on inside the customization panel edit aliases button this will open up your PGP file so you can see here it opens up a window and it's just text 
This will give you a little bit of a description and you can see how long that it's been here, 1997. Scroll down. Here are some examples. The real heart of it is starts right here. As you can see, 3A will do your 3D array command. And you can see also that some of these aren't short. The 3D navigate will do the 3D walk. A lot of these are old names for commands that have been replaced. Feel free to print this out and study it if you would like to get a better view of it and a better understanding. I suggest that you keep the list intact for now until you learn AutoCAD and become more familiar with it. Once you've used it for a while and have developed a method to use it with, then you can start to customize this list. For now, just learn the aliases that are in it or at least some of the major commands that you're going to use, you'll find that you might not need to change any of it.